It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another tutorial. This tutorial is going to be on vehicle, air, land and naval variants. It has been requested quite heavily in the comments, so I will deliver. Remember, I will be producing a new tutorial video each day. I want to comment below, guys, from you right now. I want you guys telling me exactly what tomorrow's tutorial should be about. A tutorial, a guide, an exploit, some kind of game mechanic that may be explained. If you've already commented on a previous video, comment again, drop it again. I might see it. We might make a video. We'll see how things go. I remember, guys, also, this very moment, I'm going to go quiet for a moment. I want you to like this video. Go on. Like it. Go on. You like it? Great. All right. So we're going to talk about variants. What is a variant? A variant is an ability to spend your army, naval, and air experience to make your vehicles ever so slightly better. Very slightly. Small amount. Okay. The next question is going to be, what do the stats mean? Now, this is a big question, particularly when you look at the stats for division templates. Now, everyone has an understanding what these stats mean. Mostly, they're their own interpretation and based on the tooltips when you hover over them. Most some of them are quite easy to understand. Some of them are very speculative. For instance, breakthrough. And reliability how do these mechanics actually work based on their numbers feed into the game the truth is nobody knows paradox no but they don't want to tell us probably because it might lead to us exploiting those mechanics in game so what i want to tell you just as a caveat that i am going to explain my interpretation of what these stats mean and how they reflect the game their overall impact though is unknown is it going to be a massive impact is it going to be a small impact I'm not sure. I'm only going to give you my personal anecdotes because, uh, as I said to you, the stats are at the moment completely unknown of how much impact they make on the overall game. What vehicles can have variants? So for land, it can only be tanks and tank variants. For air, it can be everything aside from transport planes. And ships, it's everything apart from convoys. Okay, so what variations can you make on tanks? We'll use this light tank leopard as an example. Just the heads up, I have researched all the technologies. So, you can make armor stronger on the tank. Self-explanatory. Make the main gun bigger, gives you more hard and soft attack. You get more reliability. And you can get a bigger engine size that gives it more speed. Um, for the most part, those variants are all the same. The, the name of the gun does change for anti-air and anti-tank, but the stats are pretty much similar. It's, an it's basically a buff to attack. Um, Air-wise, there are some slight variations. For instance, the fighters have more range, reliability, more attack, and more engine, which equates to more agility, which works out pretty much to be defense. Close support, air support is the same. Naval bombers is the same, but the attack equates to naval attack. Uh, then you've got tactical bombers, which you've got bombing stat, which is pretty much your attack as well. And that's pretty much it. So the next question is going to be, where are these improvements most worthwhile? Most worthwhile. So first of all, we're going to go into tanks. Now, overall, the stat that is most worthwhile for a tank is armor. In the end of the day, you're making a tank to give it nice, hard armor, so therefore the enemy can't pierce it, so therefore you get that massive buff that the enemy can't pierce the armor. So in that case, more armor is going to benefit you massively, and that will cost you 100 experience. We'll, we'll cheat in some XP, just for the purpose of this. Let's pick a panther. So, as you can see here, it does doing a few things. One, it's improving the armor by plus 22.5, which is a massive armor buff, but... Increasing the armor on this tank also has some negatives. It's reducing the speed by one kilometer per hour and it also dropping the reliability by 20. Just a really quick explanation. Reliability is basically how many losses you take from attrition in combat. Explains it here. The lower the value, more likely the equipment is of suffering a random failure. Accidents are exploding in a fierce ball, de death ball when lightly bumped. You get the idea. So it's just basically saying that, you know, when you look on your combat screen here, it gives you a breakdown of losses through attrition. Reliability is low, you take more losses. When reliability is high, you take less. So to balance out this stat, you want to go for more reliability. And you can see there, it's balanced out now. You could go for an extra engine as well. And then you can balance that stat as well. But if you look at the cost of this, it's 385 army experience. This is pretty expensive. If you went for this, you're pretty much not getting any other variant on the tank. 
But this, that's pretty much it, really. So just to summarize really briefly, the most important stat you want for tanks is pretty much armor. There are exceptions, for instance, because, for instance, adding more armor onto a light tank is probably not going to give you that much of a boost anyway. So maybe you want to go for more of an attack for the light tank, for instance. Or, for instance, if you are going for a self-propelled artillery, which you're mainly getting that for the amount of soft attack it can deliver, adding more attack onto that is going to be worthwhile. An extra 17.5 soft attack, that's awesome. In that case, you are losing reliability and you are losing max speed. So adding some more reliability on is going to balance that out. So overall, it's going to cost you 220. So you get the idea, really. So you, you, you play into the strengths of the reason why you're producing that specific tank. And in that case, you want the tanks to be armored for your breakthrough and for your only ability to pierce. And you want your self-propelled to do lots of attack. So in that case, it balances the both out. So it gives you an example of why you produce it and why you do it. What else? So we've got fighter planes. So fighters, what's the most most requested and most likely benefit you if you go for the variant. The biggest benefit is going to be engine. Engine is great because it doesn't hurt any other stats, gives you more max speed, which equates to how move they move from base to base, and they also give you more agility. Agility is pretty much defense in the air. It's kind of a weird way of naming it, but it literally is that. It's the ability for the plane to dodge damage, be really quick and agile in the air, so it can move out the way of damage. So what it's basically saying is 100 defense, and it adds an extra 20 defense on, so 120 defense. When it comes to dogfighting and air superiority battles for instance germany versus england in the battle of britain agility is the stat is the golden stat is the stat of stats so if you have more agility at the end of the day you are going to take less overall losses and they're going to take more when it comes down to improving the fire some more though you might want to work at getting some more weapons Remember, though, increasing weapons destroys the reliability. Now, reliability is more important for planes because it will result in more accidents. So, in all honesty, you don't want to get that stat too low. So, you want to buff it back up again. And there you go. It's balanced. But you remember, this is 900 costing. So, you might have to make two variants of this. So, what might happen is you might have to do... Uh, you'll go for engine first. You've got the variant, which is here. It's got the A in it. You can give it a special name if you want. Um, and then you can add on some more different variants to it to improve it a second time around. So you can't max the stats out with 500 XP. You That's the cap in the game, so you have to do two two waves of it, for instance. Uh, there's also some others as well. Close air support, the main use. Depending on how much air superiority you have, whether you're winning the air war or not, depends on what you go for. Engine's going to mean they're going to survive better because they're going to have more agility. A more attack means they're going to bomb more troops on the ground, so therefore help your advance. So it depends on what you want to go for there. Naval bombers, you mainly adapt. the main objective is to bomb enemy ships, so having more attack is going to be more worthwhile. Be aware, though, it will hurt the reliability massively, as you probably already know, as I've just said. Heavy fighters are pretty much just fighters with more range and attack, better at taking down the planes, so overall, depends on what you want to do. Engine or weapons might be worthwhile. Um, I don't, I honestly, personally, don't really rave about strategic or tactical bombers. I don't think they're that great, but if you are going to make them, probably the stat is going to be bombing you want to go for to do more strategic bombing because that's their overall purpose. Yet again, you're making, you're making the variants better at what they excel at already to make them better at what they do. Finally, we have ships. So, the number one ship you're probably going to produce the most in any single game is probably going to be destroyers. So making your destroyers better is going to be worthwhile. It is situational what you're going to do, though. If you've got a, a big fleet that consists mainly of destroyers, maybe torpedoes are going to be worthwhile. Because when they can get close, they can hit capital ships and do lots of filthy damage. Or it could be the fact that you're playing as maybe the UK or USA and you're trying to hit submarines that are hitting convoys. Engines will be worthwhile because it gives you more range, evasion and max speed. Also, evasion is also worthwhile for Germany if you're wanting to avoid combat and just take out what you can willy-nilly. Uh, also, if you're trying to hit submarines, this is a good start as well. don't think this is that worthwhile because destroyers are also... Destroyers at the moment already do good damage to destroyers, uh, to submarines anyway, so this stat's not that worthwhile. And you've also got anti-air as well, which could be situational, depending if you're like Japan or USA and you want to fight an air war. This is probably the number one you want to go for. You want to improve your destroyers to begin with, and then work on other ones. Now, the reason why you make capital ships is to make them hard, so making them harder is going to help you as well. So adding more armor on is going to make them tougher, absorb more damage, make them big, fat bullet sponges. Why do you make carriers? You make carriers to put planes on them. So increasing the deck size is going to be worthwhile. You can add an extra 31 ships onto that carrier. That's awesome. This is probably going to be a controversial one. This People are going to disagree with me on this. Probably the reason why is there is a limit at the amount of sh air planes that can enter combat in a naval battle. So maybe this could push you over the limit. It might just be better off to make more 
carriers overall. So in that case, maybe you want to go for armor, for instance, but you are reducing the deck size there. Or you want to go for engine, so it has more evasion, for instance, but it is dropping the reliability by a small amount. As I said to you in the pre as I said a little bit early on, um, I'm not sure how the stats affect the vehicles, because I have no idea how reliability affects a ship. I have no idea. If you it, it pretty much is up to your own interpretation because I can't really see any instances of an accident and a carrier getting sunk completely based on low reliability. But you're going to guys, you can drop below a comment if you've got any suggestions of how that mechanic might work. And finally, you've got submarines. If you're going to go for a big fat sub army, I guess engine's going to be worthwhile for the extra range and evasion, uh, max speed. Um, stealth is also worthwhile as well, particularly if you're Germany, you're making a sub a super sub fleet. Uh, depending on what you're going to be doing, if you're hitting convoys with these, uh, probably stealth and engines worthwhile. But if you're going to be using these as like a super big fat mega sub fleet, just torpedo is going to be worthwhile to try and hit enemy capital ships. That's pretty much it, guys. That is my brief tutorial on vehicle variations. Is there anything I missed in this video you'd like me to talk about further? Drop a comment below. Remember, this is going to be another tutorial that will be posted tomorrow and in that case, I'd like you to drop a comment of any other mechanics in game tutorials or anything I can give you a guide on that can help you understand more about the Hearts of Iron 4 world. And guys, don't forget, remember to like this video. I'll see you guys next time. See you later, boys. Bye-bye.